In The Elder Scrolls Online, there are many support sets for PvP healers. Sets you often see on healers include Pillager's Prophet, Spell Power Cure, and Powerful Assault. Of course, there are also some support sets that just aren't worth it. Yet some of these sets remain popular. Some build creators keep recommending them to this day, and I frequently see people run them in fairly high-end groups. For this video, I want to shed some light on the two sets I think have the worst popularity to usefulness ratio. Two sets that are pervasive, yet add little value to whatever group you're running them in. I do this not just to prevent you from running them, but also because it provides some insight into the way support sets are procced, the relevance of good uptimes and some other idiosyncrasies of the PvP in this game. Just a final heads up before we start. During my explanation, I'll make multiple references to logs. ESO logs are a tool available to PC players that allows them to monitor pretty much all the data during a PvE or a PvP raid, such as damage and healing done, buff up times, right down to each individual cast per player. These are great for looking at the numbers behind certain sets and skills. This may all sound a bit technical, but I'll do my best to stick to the basics and explain how these stats translate into things you actually notice while playing, no matter if it's on PC or console. Gossamer is a light armor set found in my favorite dungeon in the game. Cradle of Shadows. With one line of Magicka recovery and two lines of maximum Magicka, the initial bonuses are quite useful to a healer. However, it's the five piece bonus I take issue with. According to the tooltip, healing yourself or an ally will grant them major evasion. This reduces the damage done to you by area of effect attacks by 20%. Particularly in Cyrodiil, Major Evasion is a super important buff, because a huge chunk of the damage you'll incur will fall into this category of AoE damage. You could even make the argument that in some situations, Major Evasion is more important to have than the common armor buff, Major Resolve. Nightblades have access to the Major Evasion buff through their class kit but all the other classes will have to get this buff through the evasion skill and its morphs, or blade cloak and its morphs. The issue with this is that evasion requires you to have at least 5 medium armor pieces equipped, while blade cloak requires you to have dual wield weapons slotted. So if you want to cover this buff and you aren't a knight blade, you're going to be a bit restricted in how you put your build together. Gossamer is often touted as a solution to this problem. A healer or support slots Gossamer and the rest of the group doesn't have to worry about major evasion anymore. Right? Wrong. Let's read the tooltip again. When you heal yourself or an ally, you grant them major evasion for one second. It's important to know what this means in ESO tooltip jargon. To heal someone, you need to actually restore a portion of their missing health. If you cast a heal on your friend and they are already at full health, this is considered an overheal. Generally speaking, about 80% of the heals you will cast during a session are overheals. This also means that only a fraction of your casts will count as heals as per this tooltip and thereby proc the effect. But don't worry, it gets worse. There are some sets like Powerful Assault where once you meet the proc condition, which in the case of PA is casting an ability from the Assault Tree, you grant the bonus to all group members around you. This is not the case for Gossamer. In the tooltip it specifies that you are only granting the effect to the person you are healing. So if you cast a heal into a group of five and three of them are already at full health, only the other two will get the major evasion. What tops it off is that the effect lasts for a measly one second. After that, you will have to heal the target again for them to get the effect. There are several problems with this. The first is that you can only grant major evasion to a player that is already taking damage, and you are going to have to continue healing them if they want to maintain the effect. If you are hit by strong AoE damage, major evasion can help soften that blow significantly, but when it can only be applied after that initial blow, you are already on the back foot. What this means in practice is that a group that relies on Gossamer for major evasion has horrid uptimes. I've gone through several logs of different groups and I struggled to find a single person who reached over 30% major evasion uptime from Gossamer alone. Even people who had over 20% uptime seemed pretty rare. 10 to 18% was the most common, with some even falling below that 10% threshold. Mind you, this was in groups with 
pretty good healers. For reference, in most organized groups, a major evasion uptime of more than 80% is typically considered good. Below 50% is already considered quite bad, and anything below 30% is considered downright abysmal. Imagine if you only had 20% uptime on other vital buffs such as Major Brutality or Major Resolve. You'd have a word with the player responsible. This is why you will always be better off running your own source of Major Evasion. The value of Gossamer emerges only when several players in a group have absolutely no way of slotting their own Major Evasion skill. Even then, the effect of Gossamer would barely be noticeable and the support player might be better off running a different set, but at least in that situation it offers a theoretical benefit to the group. The reason I've disliked Gossamer for years is that it can actively hurt group survivability. So often I've heard someone go, we'll just get someone to run Gossamer so it frees up a skill slot for the rest of us. Sacrificing 60-70% to uptime on one of the most important defensive buffs for the group is a night and day difference for your survivability. Gossamer uptimes are terrible, the set gives people a false sense of security and you're better off running just about any other support set, even including the next one we'll be talking about. Maybe I'm opening a can of worms here, but Combat Physician is a strong contender for the most useless support set. It's different from Gossamer in that it can't actively hurt the group by making them unslot important skills, but it's one of those sets that you could just delete from the game and it would have zero impact on any group's performance. Combat Physician also starts with some okay bonuses. One line of Max Magica, two lines of Crit Chance, so far so decent. Then comes the 5 piece bonus. When you critically heal yourself or an ally, you grant your target a damage shield that absorbs 4308 damage for 6 seconds. This effect can occur once every 6 seconds per target. Alright, so a damage shield. So what exactly is the issue? First let's look at the proc condition again. This time you don't just have to heal an ally, but you have to critically heal them. Most healing builds will have a crit chance of between 30 and 40%. So first you have to make sure you heal someone, so their health must already be below 100%, and then you normally have about a 1 in 3 chance for it to crit. On the other hand, the damage shield does last for 6 seconds, which means that in practice it gets higher uptimes than Gossamer, anywhere between 20 and 40% per player, depending on the healer and the situation. Yet it's not the uptime that's the real issue. When you look at the strength of the shield, a little over 4k still sounds decent, but this is of course before Battle Spirit is applied, which cuts its strength in half, meaning the base strength of the shield is a mere 2k. Now my heals over time typically tick for more than 2k, so the damage that the Combat Physician damage shield prevents would otherwise have been healed by a single Vigor tick. If you play in a more organized group, where you might have 5 figure ticks on you, you can start to see how trivial this tiny damage shield becomes. You might say, well, it's like having an extra heal over time on you, but it's not. When you get the 2k damage shield, that's it for the moment. If the shield gets broken, you will have to wait at least 6 seconds after the previous cast to get a new one, and probably a bit more since the proc condition is pretty specific. In 6 seconds, Vigor can tick 3 times, the same goes for Radiating Regeneration. So those HOTs end up healing much more within that stretch of time than Combat Physician could ever hope to block. Even if you somehow beefed up Combat Physician all the way up to 4k, it would still not outperform a single Echoing Vigor. And that's already stretching it because from what I've seen in various logs, the average amount of damage absorbed by a single combat physician shield is around or even below 1k. This is why I said earlier you could take this set out of the equation and you wouldn't even notice it's gone. On the topic of logs though, the very reason why combat physician is so popular is largely due to these logs. If you run combat physician on a healer, you'll emerge as quote unquote the best healer on the logs. Logs count both raw, regular healing and damage shields as healing abilities, so the accumulation of all those tiny shields over the course of one or two hours usually results in millions of extra healing done. 
To someone who doesn't really know how to read logs or how shields work in there, this might make Combat Physician seem like the most amazing healing set out there. However, logs are a bit weird with how they count shields towards healing, effectively prioritizing them over real heals. If you want a full explanation of how this works, I've made an entire video on it. What it comes down to though is that despite the way logs tend to favor them, small shields have very little impact on the way fights play out. This applies to combat physician as much as it does to shield abilities such as shock from shields. Only shields of significant size such as barrier, shivering shelter or the from the brink champion point will actually prove helpful. As said, combat physician doesn't actively hurt your team. It just prevents you from running something far more useful. The way it's represented in logs also gives people the wrong idea that shields are as valuable as healing. Shields can be valuable as a supplement to actual healing when you rotate bigger shield abilities between players in a group. But replacing a full healer with a shielder will lead to noticeably worse results. The same applies when you replace a good support set with combat physician. Well, that's pretty much it. Gossamer and Combat Physician in my view are bad sets to run in pretty much any group composition. I can see why they are popular, because they look good on paper. But with the help of some data provided to us by ESO logs, it's easy to spot the drawbacks of running these sets. If you want to determine whether a support set is any good, first look at whether the buff it gives is useful to the group. Then look at the proc condition and whether it will lead to good uptimes. Easier proc conditions and longer durations usually make for better sets. As a rule of thumb, sets that proc on overheals are usually much more forgiving with their uptimes. You can give more leeway to sets that provide unique, useful buffs. A good example is Robes of Transmutation, which also doesn't have amazing uptimes, but it provides a powerful buff that is unique and lasts for 5 seconds. It doesn't replace anything, but rather just adds to it, as it's the only set that can give this particular buff. Anyway, I hope you have found this useful and now have a better idea of how to gauge the utility of certain sets and how to read their tooltips in ESO. See ya!